Hello and welcome to Issing Clay. Today we will touch upon the pre-Hellenistic history of the civilization of Elam, which once existed in the southwestern region of what is now Iran. We will also be looking at where its name came from and what it means. The Elamite culture lasted from around 3200 to 539 BCE, and it is considered one of the key Middle Eastern cultures from that period. While often thought of as a civilization with a capital city and a single lineage of rulers, in reality it is more like a confederation of city-states and their surrounding territories, much like Greece during the time of Themistocles and Leonidas. These city-states included Anshan, Awan, Susa, and Shimashki. Prior to the rise of the Akkadian Empire around 2334 BCE, Elamite culture and language was distinct from that of the neighbouring Mesopotamia to its west. However, as the Akkadian Empire conquered Sumer and parts of Elam, the Elamites adopted Sumerio-Akkadian cuneiform. The Akkadian Empire collapsed around 2154 BCE at the hands of the Guti, a people who lived in the mountains to their north. The Guti in turn were forced out by the revival of Sumerian power around 2112 BCE, and the northern parts of Elam then came under the influence of the Sumerian third dynasty of Ur. This era of subjugation did not last long, and by 2004 BCE, the Elamites were able to reassert their independence. Around 1400, they lost their independence again, this time to the Kassites under Kurigalzu I, who conquered Elam and sacked Susa. Little is known about Elam in the century and a half that followed. In the 1200s, it re-emerged as an international power as the Shutrukid dynasty. The Elamite kings, Shutruk, Nahunt and his son Kutir Nahunt II succeeded in invading Mesopotamia and capturing numerous ancient monuments such as the stela bearing Hammurabi's law code and the victory stele of Naram Sin. Kutir's son Shilkahak in Shushinak campaigned extensively as king and for a brief period he expanded Elam's territory as far east as the borders of Persepolis and as far west as the Tigris. However, this period of expansion ended when Nebuchadnezzar I of Babylon captured Susa. Nothing is known of Elam following this until 640 BCE, when the Assyrian king Ashurbanipal sacked Susa. And finally, with the rise of Achaemenid Persia around 539 BCE, Elam became a satrapy and Susa one of the empire's top three cities. As it was governed from different cities over time, both ancient and modern scholars have debated over what area of land and cultures were covered by the term Elam. Ancient sources point to the cities of Anshan, Awan, Shimashki and Susa holding the capital at different points in time. Shimashki is believed to have been in the mountains of southern Loristan province, while Awan and Susa, on the other hand, are located in Khuzestan province. The ancient geographer Ptolemy referred to the region around Susa as Susiana. Meanwhile, the geographer Strabo viewed Elam and Susiana as separate regions with Elam just being the highlands of modern Khuzestan. According to the American archaeologist Daniel T. Potts, Jewish historical sources also disagree on the subject. Some sources refer to Elam as the highland area and Susiana as the lowland area, while in others they are the same. With the discovery of the ancient city of Anshan and its importance within Elam, the definitions were debated yet again. Some scholars have suggested that the center of the Elamite world lay in the highlands around Anshan and not in the lowlands around Susa. The aforementioned Potts disagrees, pointing to the term Elam being used by the Mesopotamians to broadly describe the area without specifically referring to the highlanders or the lowlanders. 
To quote him, Elam is not an Iranian term and has no relationship to the conceptions which the peoples of highland Iran had of themselves. They were Anshanites, Mahashians, Shimashkians, Zabshalians, Sherehumians, Awanites, etc. He goes on to clarify that the term Elam is one that was used by the Mesopotamians to refer to the peoples of the highlands of the southwestern Zagros mountain range, the coast of Fars, and the plain formed by the Karun Karkeh river system. The Sumerians used the exonym Elam, and the Akkadians used the exonym Elamtu in referring to the region, both of which generally translate as highlands or high country a fitting name as most of the civilization existed on the Iranian plateau. Other names for the land and its people are Huja in Old Persian and Susiana, as previously mentioned. However, the endonym used by the people that lived there for themselves and their land appears to have been Haltami or Haltamati, which much like the Sumerian and Akkadian versions translates into those of the highlands. Therefore, Elam can usually be translated as high country or highlands. Anyway, that's all for this video. Sources and citations have been left in the description below and in the credits. They are a good place to start if you want to know more about the subjects covered in this video. As with all video channels, please feel free to like, comment, share and subscribe. And until next time, have a good evening 